Welcome to the Fishing for a Reason podcast. It is great to have you guys all back here again. And today we're going to talk about razor clams. If you have not had a chance to catch episode number 42 and you're interested in planning your very first razor clam dig, or you're like, I have no idea what that even means, and I'm kind of curious, go back to episode 42 and check it out where we walk you through the step-by-step-by-step process to get set up to go on your first razor clam dig and have success. So for my science nerds, this episode is for you. My name is Jamie Propst. I am the co-founder of Anglers Unlimited, where we help people catch more fish and have more fun. Here in Washington State, we're based out of Anacortes, Washington, run a fishing charter, and we also like to do all sorts of other outdoor adventures and bring some of those insights and learning to you guys. So what I've discovered over the last 40 whatever episodes that we've done, people like the nerdy stuff. I did a little experiment here and there with some science and, you know, just want to know more about the animal type of shows. And you guys said you enjoyed it. So got another one for you. We'll just keep them coming. But if you have any topics that you want to learn more about, you have questions, send them to us. You can email us at support at anglersunlimited.co. You can also comment below this video. If you're following us on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That is the best way to tell us that you're interested in the content that we're creating. And it also supports our YouTube channel. So hit that subscribe button. If this is something that you're getting value out of, and if you're not, guess what? You don't have to watch. So with that, we're going to dive right in uh, to our topic today, which is the Pacific razor clam life cycle slash some clamtastic clam facts that you didn't know you needed to know. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We also have an inner circle community of anglers. If you are looking to get better faster by finding the resources you need, the maps you need, the recipes you need, the gear lists you need for any of the saltwater fisheries here in the Puget Sound area, go to anglersunlimited.co forward slash gold to check out our gold membership. It is open right now. We just reopened the doors. So if you're looking to hop in and check that out, make sure you check out that website and get in before we close her down again. So we do have a little opener here this winter and we're excited to welcome in our new members and expand the knowledge base of the community. It's a really fun group of people that meet on a monthly basis. We do seminars, we do Q and A's, we do live training classes. We do all sorts of really fun things. So with that, we're going to dive right in today to our topic at hand. One of our holy crap biology things that you didn't know you needed to know. If you had to answer this question, how fast? do you think a razor clam can dig? And the answer is up to nine inches per minute, according to the Ocean Conservancy. It actually makes them one of the fastest mobile bivalves out there. So that's pretty interesting. They actually don't just dig, they they siphon sand through them, which gives them that advantage to dig faster. It's really cool. So if you actually look at the razor clams physiology based on the clams muscle strength and size and shape, they should not be able to burrow more than a few centimeters deep at a time. If you just look at that, the way they're, they're configured, but they can actually dig a significant amount. So that's a fun little fact for you. Clams have typically only live to be about six years old here in Washington state, but they have actually calculated in Alaska clams to be up to 11 years old. And those six-year-old clams here in Washington usually are about six inches long. So like the size of a dollar bill in Alaska, they've seen them up to 12 inches long. That is a seriously large razor clam. So a little bit of an interesting fun fact for you there. Pacific razor clams can be found on the West Coast from Pismo, California, all the way up to the Alaskan Aleutian Islands. Let's talk about the actual razor clam life cycles. So according to Alaska Department of Fish and Game, breeding for razor clam occurs during May through September, is closely associated with water temperature. So a temperature of 55 degrees Fahrenheit is the trigger for spawning. And what these guys do is they do have 
have separate sexes. So there are male clams and there are female clams. And the way they breed is females will release their eggs into the water column as well as the males will release their sperm. So they're just hoping it matches up and gets things going. But there's no actual breeding behavior that takes place with these guys. That water temperature is going to trigger them to release those eggs and sperm. And then fertilization essentially occurs by chance. So it's called broadcast spawning and throws that genetic material into the ocean and just hopes for the best. And so it's speculated that the Pacific razor clam females can deposit up to 118.5 million eggs at one time. So the ranges, depending on the female's clam's age, they can have up to 300,000 eggs dispersed up to that 118.5 million eggs. The larger the female, the more eggs she releases essentially. And the reason for that, if you think about each individual clam releasing that many eggs into the water, it's because there's a very low percent chance of that clam to survive, make as much as they can to give the species the best chance of survival. So why so many? The razor clam's reproductive cycle lacks efficiency. It's compensating with the numbers. The chance of survival for an individual egg is very, very low. So next, the fertilized eggs are developed into ciliated motile larvae within 12 hours of fertilization, according to the Fisheries Oceans of Canada. And they're just these little microscopic larvae bear little resemblance to actually what the parent clams look like. Short hair-like projections called cilia, and that they use that to actually propel themselves. And over time, between five to 16 weeks, they're gonna get bigger and start growing a shell. And that's gonna cause them to sink down into the sandy areas of the surf. At that time, we'll be able to start digging. They will mature in roughly 18 months to two years. And at that time, they'll be approximately four inches long and able to reproduce themselves. So the predators of the Pacific razor clam, as you can imagine, are going to be birds, bears, humans, Dungeness crab, starry flounder. Even when these guys finally do make it into the sand, they are not guaranteed to survival. The Pacific razor clam is going to feed on a variety of phytoplankton, which may include diatoms. So if you have gone to WDFW's website and you see the different proposed clam dates for clam digs, yeah. um, we talk about this in detail a lot more in episode number 42 on the Fishing for a Reason podcast. You can go check that out. But they actually will say tentative clam dig dates, and they're picking those based on tides and specific seasons not to interrupt the breeding season of the razor clams. So on those low tide days when it's easier for us to harvest them, WDFW is actually going to go out and do some sampling to make sure that it is safe to consume those shellfish. And the reason for that is because the phytoplankton that they eat includes what we call diatom. And those are known to produce domoic acid, which is a neurotoxin in higher quantities can be very harmful to human health. So if you go to WDFW's website and just search domoic acid levels, you can actually scroll down and see when things have been sampled. So if you click on Long Beach as an example, it's going to show you exactly where the level of toxicity concerning for human consumption and where they actually tested and on what date and what level parts per million were detected in those clams. So you can see everything is way below the unsafe consumption level, but this is a really cool thing to just check out and see why we have those tentative dates. And it gives you an indication that, you know, we're not seeing a lot of spikes. So you can pretty much guarantee that those tentative dates are going to turn into actual days that you can go ahead and plan your dig. So what's also interesting is that domoic acid absolutely has no effect on the clam. It does not harm them at all, which is why we test them because it can be harmful to us if we consume it. So symptoms, if you were to ingest this domoic acid at a higher than safe level, the symptoms that you're going to experience are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal cramps within 24 hours of eating the clams. So just a little bit of history of why all that exists for you. Um, you're good. It's highly monitored and generally safe to consume. 
So modern management approaches in order to preserve the viability of the species to make sure that there's plenty out there to reproduce and keep it a healthy species that we can continue to harvest. So what WDFW's approach is, is they, they do a stock assessment, make sure to link to an article on Medium that shows a picture of what exactly this looks like and describes it in detail. But it's an annual razor clam stock assessment process that runs from May to June or until August or September and based on the low tide. So biologists and scientists are going to all five of the core razor clam beaches, which are Long Beach, Twin Harbors, Copalis, Mocrox, and Claylock. And then each day on a low tide, whether in the morning or the middle of the night, they're going to place a half square meter ring in the sand, pump water from the surf at 100 to 120 gallons per minute. And it takes about three minutes for that ring of sand to like liquefy. And that actually causes the clams to slowly be released from underground and just float to the surface. The team will then count and measure each of the clams carefully and then place them right back into the sand. But that's how they assess the stocks and make sure that everything is reproducing well and is healthy enough for us to continue to harvest. And you can check out that article it shows several pictures of, of what it looks like. And you'll see those clam dig circles. So if you ever see that happening, take a minute and stop and watch <laughs> because it's pretty dang cool. And this is why it's so important for us to honor the regulations. As you guys know, the daily limit for razor clams is 15 clams per day per person. And that's regardless of the size. So if you dig up a razor clam and it is four inches or six inches or two inches, either way, you're keeping it. So make sure that you honor those limits so we can continue to preserve this awesome fishery, which is really fun to do in the fall or winter months and spring. So we can continue to do it all year long. But I promise you 15 clams per person, you're not going to go hungry. <laughs> These guys definitely fill you up, especially if you clam a few days back to back. Always make sure that you double check the regulations before you go out and dig. You can just go to WDFW, search razor clam, and it'll pull right up to the page and you'll see what the updates are there for whether it's a tentative date or if it has been confirmed as safe to go ahead and dig. So another interesting fact from an economic standpoint is revenue generated by local travel associated specifically with recreational harvest of razor clams increased by 19% over the past decade from 2008 to 2019 in Clatsop County. And that's a significant imprint on that local economy. So not only are you getting out there with your friends and family to experience a really fun fishery that's going to be lifetime of memories and a lot of full bellies of warm clam chowder, but you're also helping the local community by supporting tourism in that area. So clam digs are a super fun way to get outside, have a good time and harvest something delicious. So next time that you're out there and you're looking for those little dimples in the sand where those siphons are sucking down and you're going to harvest that clam, think about what it took for that clam, that one egg out of all those millions that were put into the water did survive that five to six week journey, floating around, settled to the floor, avoided all those predators so that you could finally get them and put them on your plate. <laughs> so take a minute and appreciate it and enjoy the next time that you go out there and have a blast. And make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about any sort of species that we harvest out here in the saltwater in the Pacific Northwest. We release a video every single week and we would love to see you here. Same time, same place, same channel on the Fishing for a Reason podcast. Thanks everyone. Have a wonderful day.